Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. I'd like to start today's channel with a huge heartfelt thank you to all you subscribers and everyone who comments on our channels. It's really, really cool stuff. Um, and you regulars would have noticed that um, our numbers are climbing drastically, which is absolutely amazing. We're hitting so many different parts of the globe. It's really, really exciting stuff. So once again, Thank you so much. Don't forget, hit the like button and always leave a comment and I will do my best to get back to you. Although it's very hard because there's so many. But yes, we will do our best. We are, we are here to help. Right then, so carrying on with our little run of rehouses, today we are going to um, rehouse our Pisotheria Metallica, the Gucci Ornamental the sapphire ornamental now this is a really really popular spider within the hobby because it's lovely and blue so it's very very popular now they're pretty straightforward care they are a pokey so we do need to um, be a little bit careful but hopefully we will show they're not as bad as they're made out so we're going to do our regular little housing now, um, this female is already in a 20 by 20 by 30, but she's in one of our old enclosures. So this is not a bioactive enclosure. So we're gonna move her over into a bioactive enclosure. That was a dusty lot of clay balls, that was. So we put our bit of membrane in the bottom Fill in with our potting compost. Just remember, this is just regular, cheap potting compost. There's nothing special about it. And that's all you need is a nice cheap one. And the reason we go for the cheap ones, apart from the fact that we save a couple of quid, is the fact that generally speaking, if they're cheap, they've got nothing in them. So you're normally fairly safe. So we put our soil in, and then we've got our piece of bark here. And as you can see, there's a nice shape in there, which means that we can put it up flush to the glass and it still leaves enough room here for her to feel secure and she can make up her home in there. So we're gonna put that in there like so. Push that down into the bottom. Squeeze it in. Now then, we can top up with our beastie substrate. We're going to put quite a bit of this in here. Mop it up because we're going to put a really nice ivy. Now these ivies, these are these are just a straightforward standard ivy, but they seem to do really, really well in our enclosures. So we're just going to tease that out of here. So we don't need all of this soil. Now you'll find in some of these plants that there is fertilizers and bits and pieces within the plant. Um, these won't do any harm to your spider. They really won't. So we're gonna put that in there. Try and get this the best way round possible. It will find its own way once it settles in. There we go, that's it. And that will soon start charging all over the place. Let's put that there. And we've got our moss. Oh, look at that, that fits. Oh, that's lovely. Our moss in there. Don't forget, our moss and our beastie, beastie substrate has got all of our spring towels and our isopods in it, which will all help to maintain this enclosure. The moss will also help to lock in the um, humidity because the Pistotheria do like a little bit of humidity. So we're gonna 
put our water bowl in. We can we'll put them in there. As you can see, that is very, very hot. Always watch your fingers. There. Remember, we can spray it, and that is set. You see, that's gone rock hard, which means we can use it immediately. Stick a little bit of water down on our plant. Now we can go quite heavy with the water in on the plant here. We we'll put a little bit on our moss. Don't need too much, and we can drop some more water down the sides. Now this is because of the clay balls in the bottom. It means that we can moisture load this tank without fear of it being too wet for our spider. Right, so that's all of them bits. Let's get rid of this. Move all these bits out of the way. Now then, this is the bit we've all been waiting for. Now as you can see, she is in the back here. Just about make her out, I should imagine. Not the best picture, but we're going to get a nice close-up in a moment. So what we're going to do, we're going to turn that that way. Okay, got our lid off. Now we've got our catch cup. Now these can be quite nervous spiders. So we're not going to take any chances with this one today. What we're going to do is we're going to get her in a catch cup. And we can have a nice look at her and then we'll put her in her new enclosure. So we're just going to peel back the bark. She is absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. Can we see that? Now, she is in fact staying on the bark, so I'm wondering if we can get away with not using the catch cup, it would be nice. So what we're going to do, we're, we're going to, and you see she's turned around, she can feel the actual bark and things moving. And she's looking for somewhere to hide. Well, she's staying on the log so far. We might be lucky. We might not. What we don't want is they're going underneath it. We don't want you going underneath. No, 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 no. Don't go underneath. <laughs> yep, she's gone underneath. Okay. So, of course, the biggest problem is now we can't see her. But we're not worried. There she is. And you'll see at the moment she's under no stress whatsoever. Here she comes. She's coming back round. Right. Let's make sure that doesn't fall on her. Don't want to make a jump. So I think what we'll do is we will. We'll now get her in her catch cup, I think it's going to be the easiest option. We'll just come in nice and gently. And there you go. So we get our lid. And just gently move her across. There we go. Nice and gentle. She is now in the box. All right, let me get rid of this. Now then, let's get a nice close up look at her now. There she is. And as you can see, now she's actually sat in the box. She feels relatively secure where she is. And she's in that typical pokey stance where they spread their 
legs forwards and backwards and they sort of lock down on the hope that you can't see them. And you'll see she's got that beautiful blue colour in. Now this female was cohabited with a male back in September and um, they can take six to six months or so to actually drop a sack. So I'm hoping that this move will actually encourage her to do just that. Although her abdomen at the moment is not looking particularly um, swollen as if it had eggs in it. Uh, it's got a little mark on her abdomen there. I don't quite know what that is. So what we're going to do now is we're going to ask her to move nice and gently into a new enclosure. Hopefully she will go. We don't want her to burst into life. We just want her to go nice and slowly. She's being a little stubborn. Normally they would have started to walk by now. Here she goes. And what we're doing is we're just tickling her feet. There we go, nice and slow. Notice we've got no aggression whatsoever. Here she comes. Look at the colouring on that. Is that not beautiful? There we go. And she's in. Looking absolutely stunning. Now these guys are said to be quite light sensitive which means that they don't, they're not really keen on bright light. Um, as you can see, she's found a dark little corner in which to hide. <laughs> we probably won't see a great deal more of her for the moment. Now, um, yes, they are said to be quite light sensitive, although I'm lucky enough that I have seven of these females and um, at least four of them will spend their days sitting outside. So, they're not all the same. They're, they're, they're very, very individual. So you might be lucky that yours will sit outside. Now, um, in terms of care, I find them to be very, very simple. A nice, simple enclosure like this looks pretty. It will give you all the humidity you need. These guys like it around a 70, 80% mark, um, but they like a dry place to rest. So you don't want them in a, in a wet enclosure. Now, something we're going to say, just hit on very, very quickly here, is regards to the humidity. There is no need to spray the whole enclosure. If, if you've got a sealed enclosure, by spraying the whole thing, you will soak everything and it will literally stay wet. If, like me, you use mesh lids, I, I use the full mesh lids on my exos, I don't cover these up at all, I, I can spray this and it will evaporate and go straight away. But if I want to increase the humidity, all I do, so I get my sprayer and I will spray down the sides like so. So the actual enclosure itself stays dry and I can do this all around wherever I need to do it. You see, I can leave it in the corner and I can just soak this up. All the water is gonna drop down into my clay balls and it will sit there until the heat eventually it will come back through, rise up through the tank. And this is what's given us our humidity. Very, very important. The rest of it can stay dry. Now then, food wise, an adult one like this will take on adult dubias without any, any trouble at all. And generally speaking, I will give these on average one adult dubia every week to 10 days. It all depends on when she shows herself. So as we've said before, I don't feed regularly, every week, every Saturday or whatever. I wait for my spiders to come out. And when they come out and ask for food, I put food in there. And this is how we work it. And this way, we get to see an awful lot more of our spiders. So then, well I hope you like that little introduction. They are an absolutely stunning spider. They are an old world spider. Um, and they, are, they, they have been given a rather dubious reputation of being very, very fast, very defensive, some might say aggressive. And as we've shown there, they're neither. If you're nice and gentle, do the job properly, move them over calmly. And we saw there that she came out, she was lovely, very obliging. We got her to move out across the moss, no trouble at all. Absolutely no trouble. This is more about how you deal with your spider 
than the spider having a bad reputation. Yeah, bad reputations come from poor handling. So bear in mind, stick with us, just practice, stay calm, everything will be good. Right then, well I hope you enjoyed that and uh, you've seen one of, our, one of our lovely blue spiders, we have a few different ones. And uh, until next time, don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spiders. I'll see you soon, guys.